All right, Raspberry Pis. So through the, the various usages of Raspberry Pi that we've come across, um, one of them that I happened to stumble across as I was setting up some stuff in my house is the ability to remote control a Raspberry Pi. Um, and no, not that kind of Pi. It would be awesome to remote control an actual Pi, although it feels like eating into the electronics would be a little more painful. So the Raspberry Pi, if you're not familiar, is just a small SOC, which is a system on a chip that we can use for IoT projects, just as I mentioned here. I've got one that is uh, running a system called Magic Mirror, which allows me to host a number of different modules, um, has news on there, it has different feeds, it'll have a different greeting. And at some point I'm going to connect my Raspberry Pi cam to Magic Mirror so that it can use facial recognition to see me and actually display a different menu based on who it detects in front of it. Um, right now it's just connected to a monitor, but I can, at some point, uh, put some of that one-way reflective stuff on a piece of acrylic and build a wooden frame for it and make an actual magic mirror for it. Um, I've got others for running home automation. They're, they're wonderfully useful little toys, um, but you can actually use them for real stuff as well. So various versions. The one I've got here is actually a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, but I've also got Pi 4s, I've got Pi 0s, Pi 0 Ws. Just depending on which set of capabilities you need, you can get the one that you want. The Pi 4s are obviously going to be more expensive. Uh, I've got the four gigabyte model. Nathan Phil, remind me, isn't that like 60 bucks now? If you get like all the bells and whistles with it too, I mean, but yeah. Yeah. If you the get Pi into a kit. Pi 4 itself, Pi 4 itself is still 35 bucks. No, no, not for the four gig. Not, not for the four gig. Uh, that's um, two gig. The, yeah, so the smaller versions are going to be cheaper. Um, there is an eight gig version as well. And that's, we're talking about RAM uh, when we talk about the different memory sizes. They all have a, a really nice ARM processor. Uh, it's got proper integrated GPUs now. And it, anyway, the, the Pi 4s are really nice, but I'm, I'm using a Pi 3 right now, but I also have Pi 2s at home. You can get all kinds of different things. They're, they're great little devices. I've got way more than I probably should. They run Raspbian, which is a variant of Debian. So if you're familiar with Debian or Ubuntu, which is another variant of Debian, you should be familiar with Raspbian just fine. They've got GPIO, which is general purpose input output pins. So they're just a way of sending a signal to different real world devices. So to set one up, you just download the Raspbian OS, which you can find at that link. And that link will have different versions of the OS that you can download. So let's see if can you see my browser window? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the version for the 32-bit OSs. Uh, this has recommended software, so it's going to have the desktop, um, which, because it's Linux, you can actually get different types of desktops that have different utilities, different looks, different things. So it's it's got one built in, uh, but this also has recommended software, so it's going to have some things just installed for you. It's the one that, if you're not familiar with, you're going to want to use. You can use just the basic desktop or this light, which doesn't really have anything installed, including it's missing the desktop. So when you boot, you're going to boot directly to the terminal. And it's also going to be the most lightweight because there's nothing in it. So you can see up here, this one is 2.8 gigabytes versus 438 megabytes. So a lot more stuff in this one. Um, but you can get different operating systems for it and do different things with it. It's yeah, we've done a few RetroPie things for making gaming machines out of them. But you're going to download the operating system to run it. You're also going to need to download a disk creator tool like Rufus. And that's going to allow you to actually create the disk that the Raspberry Pi OS will run on. And then for this purpose, you're going to need to download one of various different controller apps. This is the one that I happen to be using in the demo today, which is for Android. There are other versions for iOS. Um, and you don't have to use this one. This is just one that I've kind of liked. So lots of different options. All right, next piece of setup, you're going to burn the image file to a micro SD card. You're going to use a program like Rufus to do that. Rufus is just a simple utility, and it's going to bring up a window like this, and it's going to say what device you want to burn it to. That's going to be your micro SD card. You're going to select your image file, and then tell it to start optionally do things like name the label and pick a file system and so forth. 
but really, really simple. That's going to take a few minutes for the two and a half or so gig version, and it's pretty quick for the smaller versions. Uh, this is the controller that I'll be showing off in a minute. But that's going to make the, the SD card into a bootable drive, which you can power up. You're then going to connect keyboard and mouse, just your normal peripherals. There is a setup wizard that I'm not going to show because there are plenty of other videos and, and it talks about it on the Raspbian homepage. So you can look at that if you're not sure what that looks like. But it's just going to ask you questions about like your location and connecting to the internet and so forth. Then you're going to want to run the Raspbian config stuff. Um, Raspbian config is just a way for them to set up the Raspbian OS. You at minimum want to enable SSH. But you may also want to enable things like I squared C or SPY, depending on what kind of real world devices you're trying to control. Um, then reboot. So fairly simple in how you're going to be using it or setting it up at least. Um, again, all any further questions, we have other tutorials that we've done on Dunug as well as there are other websites you can go to as well. So controlling it, you're going to open a terminal inside the Raspberry Pi's OS. So you're going to actually want to be on the Raspberry Pi for this part. And you're going to want to run the command ifconfig. ifconfig is going to display a, uh, oh, actually, I can show you this, a list of interfaces for the internet. So this isn't Raspberry Pi, obviously, but this is still a Linux. It's Ubuntu. I can spell. So if I run ifconfig, that's just going to show me my different network devices that it's aware of. So for the Raspberry Pi, that's going to be a list of the everything that it's currently connected to. We want to get the IP address of whatever interface it's using so that we know how to connect to it. Um, then you're going to open up this RASP controller on your phone and you're going to create a new entry and finally add the IP address. So, let me quickly get connected on my phone here, and then I will switch presentation to that. I need to stop sharing screen on this one. Okay, looks like we can see my screen. So here is the RASP controller app. Um, we're gonna use this bottom right action button to create a new entry. And here we're just gonna put in device information, whatever you wanna call it. Here's what you'll put in the IP address. Um, SSH port is always gonna, well not always, but it's default is 22. And then you're going to log in to the Raspberry Pi. One of the things it's gonna have you do is create a new password when you do the config stuff. So just make sure you put that password here. If you change the username, make sure you did that as well. Uh, you can test the connection here and then optionally save it if it worked. So I'm actually gonna come here to the one that I've already got set up. And once you connect to it, this is the interface that you're going to see. So you've got a number of different options. This has a lot of different things built in. So you can see you've got things like temperature and humidity sensors, uh, barometric pressure, the Pi scent hat. And then if there's something that you want to use that isn't on here, you can come in here and create your own user widget that lets you control whatever thing on the Pi that you want to control. Okay, you've also got things like I can see how much RAM and CPU are being used. And yes, there are ads. Um, so if you don't like that, you can, in this version, you can pay to remove them or you can uh, get a different version that doesn't have them. But you can see I'm currently using 24% of my disk space and 12% of my RAM. And I'm not using my CPU really at all because it's not doing anything but sitting there. And then I can see what processes are running. So not a lot's on here right now, but there are a few things. So it's really nice if you wanna be able to control different versions of things. You can see here, I've got my magic mirror that's connected. And then I do have uh, my office pie and the bottom one pie hole is actually a filtered system so that on my home network, uh, everything will request to go to the internet through that particular Raspberry Pi. And it's running a system called pie hole that will block ads, block content that I don't want on my network, um, that kind of stuff. So I can control all of these from here and they just work. So one of the more 
uh, familiar things is I can look at this file manager, and this is actually the set of files on the Raspberry Pi itself. I could switch over to that Android tab, and I can actually transfer files from my phone to the Raspberry Pi directly from this interface. Okay, I can also come in here to this documents folder, and you can see there's a file that I created that I'll show off in a bit, a bit to control some of the LEDs. Um, and I can actually edit that from here using this text editor. Rather than having to do it on the Pi, I can do it from here if I want to. Okay, I've also got this SSH shell. Close that ad. And this is going to be the exact same terminal that you would run if I were sitting at the Pi itself. So any commands I would need to run if I want to actually, you know, list out my directories, I can go into the documents folder. Whoops. All right, so CD. Zoom's blocking the C button. There we go. CD documents. And then I can see that same PWM LED file that we talked about earlier. So it's exactly like you would be running on the Pi itself. Now, one thing that I can show you right now before I switch over to my camera is this GPIO control. So we talked earlier about GPIO, which is your input output stuff. From here, I can read or write those different GPIO pins. You can see I've got three set up right now, which is the red, blue, and green, which I'll show you the LED in a second. But to configure those, you're just going to hit that bottom right button, and then this is going to list off all the GPIO that the Raspberry Pi has. So you can see you get all the way down to GPIO 27. So it's got quite a few. And I can change some of the values. So I can make this reverse where one is off instead of on. And I can make this an impulse. So it'll actually turn the pin on or off for 0.7 seconds, or actually I guess just on for 0.7 seconds before it turns it back off. It doesn't let me do PWM from this interface. And there are some of those apps that will, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to uh, leave them with just the standard on off system. So I then can edit them to say this one is red, this one is blue, this one is green. And then if I put the checkbox next to them, they'll show up here. Optionally, I can set these between input and output. So if I want to read a value versus writing a value. And then by tapping on the buttons, I can change it from zero to one, which is turning it off and on. Okay, so let me stop my screen share and see if I can share my camera now. All right, aside from the mess, which is this desk currently, you can see the Raspberry Pi here. So the Pi is actually this device there. And then I've got a ribbon cable, which will take it over to this breadboard, which is connected to this LED. And it's a RGB LED. Um, this little breakout piece is just a nice feature to have where I can, right, having to connect to the pins back here, I can just connect to the breadboard itself. And then I'm connecting to pins five, six, and seven, which are the ones that I had set up inside the, uh, the app. Um, Phil or Nader, somebody have to tell me if I switch apps, if it keeps sharing my screen or showing my camera. Can you guys still see the pie? No, it's gone. Dang. It's one of the things we were afraid of. Okay, well, um, if I do that, you can at least see that the red light is on. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, it's a magenta-ish color. Get a nice yellow. And all that is happening just by me turning those GPIO pins on and off inside this whoops, inside this app here. So you can see I've got the 101. So red and green make yellow when we're talking about uh, light. Obviously purple if we're talking about pigments. Um, I wish Zoom would let us show, share multiple screens at once so I could show the camera and the app at the same time, but we haven't figured out how to do that just yet. Yeah. Okay, so questions on any of that? Actually, looks like Phil might come show the, uh, the LED. All right, so if you look at Phil's phone and my screen at the same time, so you can see here, and I've got just the red. Okay, now red is zero, so everything's off. I can turn the blue on. I can turn the green on. I can turn red and blue to get the magenta. I can turn blue and green to get the cyan. 
red and green to get yellow, all of them to get white. Okay, turn them all off. I can also come back in here to my SSH command, my SSH shell. And if I go into my documents folder, here I can run this uh, PWM LED. So I can run this script using Python and the script will take three parameters and those are gonna be PWM values for that LED. So I'm gonna tell it I want to have zero for red, 100 for green and zero for blue. Okay, so if I run that, we get green, which is what we expect. And then I can break out of that. Um, I can then tell it that I want green and blue to both be set to 100. And you can see from Phil's phone, we get cyan. Okay, because this is PWM, I can also tell it that I want to have 20% red, I want to have 50% green and 80% blue, which is going to be mostly just a light blue. In fact, 80% is almost a white. Oops. Okay, but this allows me to run this Python script and actually control what I'm doing on the Pi. So I still can show there my fingers are not in any way, shape, or form interacting with the Pi. They're over here. Um, so just working on the phone. Um, but I can come in and I can make that a custom command as well. So I'm going to tell this to continue in the background. Custom commands. Come in here and I can say PWM LED. And I can actually tell it Python. Uh, let's do that. Slash dot PWM LED. Whoops. Dot pi, and then tell it, uh, let's do 20, 70, 70. Okay, so then I could run this command. Was that Nate trying to say something while he's muted? Just get rid of the dot. Oh, yeah. Continue. Edit. Ugh. Screen share is killing me. Okay, now if I run it. No such file. Oh, it's good documents. Oh, I really should have set that up beforehand. Edit. PWM, edit. And then we get no such directory. Yeah, I probably have that file wrong. LED.py. Anyway, you can see that it is outputting the command. I'm not going to try to fix it anymore. But I can create custom commands. It'll do that for me. Um, if we look at the magic mirror one, you can see that it's got the uh, Docker Compose stuff that I'm using Docker to run my magic mirror with. Uh, Bill, if you want, you can stop your screen. I'm not going to do that anymore. So appreciate Phil for doing that for me. Um, but yeah, so that's that's one of the ways you can do remote control and even monitoring of Raspberry Pi. Questions, comments, things you'd like to see? Oh, one more thing. Uh, that little breakout board that I was showing you connects to the pins, but the pins on the Raspberry Pi aren't keyed specifically to that particular thing. So you just have to know which way to do it. And I always forget. So this has a handy little pin out which means I can look at it and say, okay, I'm using the Pi 3, so I'm gonna look at the Pi 3, and this will show me exactly what those pins look like. So I can say, okay, well, these pins up here, GPI 2 and 3, that's gonna be your I squared C stuff. Uh, 10 and 9 are gonna be, I guess 10, 9 and 11. Anyway, those two are gonna be the uh, spy things, and I can look through here and figure out everything else. So 14 and 50 are going to be my UART. Screen share. Um, and I got power and ground. So very, very handy. And I can look at the Pi 4, which is only slightly different because of the interfaces it supports. Is it silly that this is the coolest feature of the app? The pinout? Yes. Yeah, it's wildly handy. 
And it even shows me like, here's how you do a single LED. And it even gives me a resistor value. Switch. So yes, very, very handy application. Uh, other comments, questions, things you'd like to see? Okay. Yay, Dan. Absolutely.